Cameroonians are growing the more concerned about the outright disrespect for what is uh, commonly called high instructions from the President of the Republic, judging by the current standoff at the National Hydrocarbons uh, Corporation, uh, called as SNH uh, in French, uh, going by uh, what is happening. So many persons are asking what is happening with high instructions. Also, uh, looking at um, the situation that is prevailing between Cameroon's Ministry of uh, Sports and Fiscal Education and the Football Federation, a president uh, still faced with the issue of high instructions. And then uh, going further to look at um, a communique that was issued uh, to the judiciary um, in Cameroon by Cameroon's Minister of uh, Justice and Keeper of the Seals asking uh, the members of that court to be more cautious and uh, careful with uh, high instructions. So, is there a problem with high instructions in Cameroon? We're going to be focusing on uh, the current uh, standoff at the National Hydrocarbons uh, Corporation, but also we're going to be uh, profiling those potential presidential candidates uh, for the Southwest and Northwest uh, extraction in uh, Cameroon as uh, we look forward to next year's presidential election. Cameroonians are going to be called to the polls next uh, year to decide who becomes their president. Is it uh, President Paul Bia, uh, who is going to be maintained at the helm of, uh, the, um, of the nation, or an Anglophone given that opportunity to also lead uh, this nation? So this evening, we are going to give ourselves uh, the privilege to look at possible uh, personalities who can man that uh, top job for the nation as an anglophone we are discussing this with our panelists who have seated with me already in the studio good evening televiewers we are glad to have you on prime uh, for the first edition for the week we are in the company of tamai jarvis who is a journalist uh, working for my media prime at tv thank you for accepting to be part of this edition this evening. Good evening, Mr. Akum. Good evening to the peace loving people of Way Village. It is a very interesting period right now in the village with uh, a relative calm sporting event ongoing despite the bad road. And also, good evening to those in Moya. And special good evening to all political stakeholders, senior barrister Nkumu Bala Felix, uh, of course, barrister Ashu Emmanuel, and also to those who are making strife in other circles of the nation. I'm talking about Madame Kawala, I'm talking about uh, Madame Rebecca Enon Chon, I'm talking about all those who are trying their best to make sure that this nation moves on smoothly. We also are in the company of Mr. Ndiwum Emmanuel, who is uh, one of the key members of Cameroon Civil Society. We're glad to have you with us once again. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Ayo. It's a pleasure to, to kickstart Prime Eye today on Monday. And uh, I'm hoping and wishing that it's going to be a blessed week. You permit me to greet the people of Boyo, especially the Palace of Com and the Fun of Com. And uh, this land, last icon who has been very instrumental in my academic life. Honorable Ndim Abe Wange, who is watching us right from Fundong at this particular point in time. Okay, greetings to everybody watching us uh, from Belu, Njinikom, up to uh, Fundong and the entire Boyo uh, division. We are also guested this evening by Mr. Katazi, who is um, going to be one of the key pillars of uh, Cameroon's educational family. We're glad uh, to have you on this uh, platform. Thank you very much, Mr. Kum, and thank you for inviting me. It's a, it's a great opportunity. I'm good evening to tell you us and all the lovers of my media prime. It's a good opportunity for us to make our own little contribution to the political landscape in Canada. Okay, we are also in the company of the Under Secretary for Communication for the Cameroon Renaissance and Movement, they call it the CRM, led by Professor Maurice Kanto. The kangaroo man is in the house. Good evening to you, Fire this guy. Well, good evening, Mr. Kum. Uh, good evening to the level headed panelists who are here. And uh, the good thing is that um, I think we are, we, are, we are bracing up against intimidation in this country. And I think uh, special kudos to Professor Maurice Kanto, 
who is a no-nonsense political leader, and we say we will not be intimidated the least by any person who does not follow the rule of law as far as this country is concerned. Greetings to the people of Gunoko Village, His Royal Majesty Dr. Fomiki Walters, and all those who come from Bingui Central. And above all, I think greetings to Honorable Wango, who has quite been a, a very good friend in those days when we used to move over to see him as a principal over there in uh, Chiveches Fundong as well as uh, Parliamentary. And so greetings to him. I just got his name here and I said, let me send his greetings over there. The people of Belo, Fundong, and even Ginikom are very lovely. Uh, so we will be together. But then the real things must be set the way they are supposed to be, whether Yaoundé likes it or not. Okay, we are going to start with uh, this potential Cameroonians uh, for the Southwest and Northwest region who can stand in as a presidential candidate uh, next uh, year. We're profiling uh, them this evening and uh, also looking at uh, the call that has been made several for an anglophone to uh, stand as a president. Um, I don't know what are you going to talk as uh, the communication secretary for <laughs> CRM. What, what, what are you, are you discussing it or at your personal level? What do you think about the idea? Well, when we talk about uh, the issue of potential anglophone president, mm -hmm. I could only say comment on that as an individual mm -hmm. because um, my party does not have that in the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, my party has already made it clear that in the coalition that we formed. It is clear that we have a presidential candidate who is Professor Maurice Kamto. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is clear also that anyone who wants to join the coalition only joins the bandwagon and moves on. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I am English speaking, so I could comment on that uh, while taking my party stand, which is undisputed. Um, the, the issue of an Anglophone president is not really the world the problem, but the problem is, again, that... Uh, who are those to postulate? And then, we have persons who can postulate, no doubt, who can postulate, no doubt. But the question is, what is the mentality of the Anglophones themselves? I've been here on several platforms where I got viewers talking about there is no credible uh, political party that they can count on as far as making a change in Cameroon. And when they were saying that, none of them, and most of the time, uh, most of the messages I, I was getting you reading them uh, here, never said, all right, if we doubt these politicians, we think that we can, we can equally give our support, maybe to an Anglophone, whether it's by Mr. Kerebuna or it's by Mr. Agbobala, I have not had that. So at the end of it, you now realize that the mentality to pick up an Anglophone president is a daunting task. And first, I would say it without fear or favor that we could say the grammar, we could speak the grammar we are speaking here, but the groundwork for that has not been done. Because last time on this platform, we were analyzing what it takes to be a presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. And we realized that, one, an ideological build-up is required. And the ideological build-up is required from those who buy the idea of any president, whether it's Anglophone or not, and secondly, the groundwork of financial preparation is highly needed. Now, with all of this, I said it is, we are just discussing it, but it cannot be visible now. I keep saying this without whatever amount. Because we have not sat as one man to think of it that somebody like Taima Javis could equally be. Why not my brother here? Why not Jimum uh, Emmanuel? Why not even Mr. Kum? But when you get all the returns that come out, nobody tells you that this, this person can even feature. But they keep on castigating that from every indication, no, President Pobia will still win. There's no serious person who can challenge President Pobia. So you discover that by virtue of this thinking, many of them have already surrendered even this idea of uh, an Anglophone president because when you want to look at it, what are some of the factors that still make it a problem? As I said, the issue of divide and rule. Now, you have xenophobic attacks and utterances the man from the Northwest will have this against the man of the Southwest. The man from the Southwest against this. The man of Fako will say this against the man of Manu. So that policy of divide and rule is still a worrisome factor. Until we change the mindset, which that is what my media prime is doing, until we change the mindset. But the question is, what my media prime is doing, uh, is it the same thing that we are having with the other media organs? Suddenly it will be no. 
So which means that it will require some time for my media prime to change the mindset of people that if you cannot believe in a politician to change your system, then you can you should be able to believe in at least one man. Then you can come together. That's why I said the just they have a lot of work to do. Because diasporas have failed us. If they were equally working as one army, they would be the one to postulate. Like we say sometimes here that you can pick somebody like what they talk about Barack Obama. Now, there were persons who saw a vision in him, molded him up, picked him up, and sponsored the presidential campaign. And that one goes because, one, he was willing. Two, he had the charisma. He accepted it. And three, the people overwhelmingly supported him. And so finance was, was needed for him to tell all the 50 states in the U.S. of A. Now, if I stand, for example, and I'm telling somebody that I want to stand, the next person besides me will say that, this is my own stand. He's not from my village. How do I support him? And if the man in Fako says he wants to stand, the next is that the man in Mezam will say, but why? Why should it be somebody from Southwest to stand? Or the man in Manu will say, why should it be the man in, in, in Fako to stand? So all in all, their mindset needs to be adjusted. That's why we call on the kangaroo system because they have a chance, first, to restructure the constitution. Once they start building a constitution that they say, each time that the presidency is rotatory, each time a president is from, just like Canada system, for example, each time you have a president in the first speaking part of the country, the vice president automatically comes from the English speaking. Now, after two mandates, it rotates back to the, the, the president becomes from the anglophone part of it, and the vice president becomes from, comes from the uh, first speaking. If they don't adjust the constitution, which cannot force us, by virtue of who we are, to start in that direction, I think we'll just be blowing hot air. It is quite a call for concern. Okay, it's quite a call for concern. This issue has been making waves yeah, for so many years, but not actually uh, finding a headway. Is it also this uh, issue of uh, divide up and rule, or the fact that almost everybody wants to be president? So many of them. Uh, Mr. Kum, thank you very much. Mm. In my opinion, I think a lot of factors kick in. Mm. A lot of factors kick in here, uh, and I will just pick a few of them. The first factor that kicks in is that the issue of uh, the political system in Cameroon is such that it is pretty, pretty difficult for any Anglophone to strive to the top. First, how, if you look at the, 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 the geography of the country, we have four Anglophone provinces against eight Francophone provinces, uh, regions rather, I beg your pardon, against eight Francophone regions against two Anglophone regions. <laughs> Yeah. Eight against two. So for an Anglophone to prevail as a presidential candidate and win presidential election in Cameroon means you must have won the hearts of voters in the eight Anglophone regions. And we know the dynamics, how difficult that is. So in my opinion, for an Anglophone to be president in Cameroon, one of the most viable options would have been would be the rotatory us working on the constitution to give the Anglophones the opportunity to come in via rotatory presidential uh, elections in the situation where what uh, the previous speaker said like what the previous speaker said so that if this time it is a francophone that is uh, president then the next time should be an anglophone i think that's uh, almost the only path that we can conveniently see an anglophone lead cameroon otherwise if you go through the normal democratic political process in cameroon it can be very very difficult to get an anglophone to the Presidency yeah, of Cameroon. The impression that um, there is an Anglophone versus a Francophone issue is that not also um, not too healthy? Because if it is alleged that Nijon Frunzi won elections in 1992, he was not voted by going by 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 what you're saying. It means that the majority of the persons who voted for him to be president are, are Francophones. That is, I think, I, I think I like that. And I want to remind you that 1992 is not now. I'm talking based on the prevailing political landscape in Cameroon now. For now, in the early 90s when the SDF was formed, it was very, very popular. I don't think there's any party in Cameroon today led by an Anglophone that is even one quarter as popular as the SDF was in 1990. So I'm, I'm, I'm basing my argument on the, the, the situation, the Cameroonian political, the Cameroon political lands, landscape now. The, the Cameroon political landscape now. So if you look at it, you cannot even compare it to 1990 because Fundi was Fundi could tour the whole country in 1990. But everywhere was he was born. Yeah, he was, he was an, an Anglophone. I'm saying that the landscape is different. If you look at the, the popularity of the SDF, then there's no party led by an Anglophone now that is that popular. Why, that, that's what why, I'm saying. Why, why don't why, why don't you think that 
an admiral phone could be identified like fire every stallion here who is charismatic and everybody rallies around him and he wins across uh, the, the group he's he's um the, he, you are a militant of the cameroon renaissance movement and if we were to go by proportion you would not handle a, a position in that party yeah. irrespective of the fact that majority are this but he is um he holds a position in that party the truth is are you saying that an anglophone cannot be made president of uh, the crn it's possible it's actually <coughs> yeah <laughs> no for that it is it is possible mm. but as i said there are several factors that has to account for that mm. because if you look at it um where do we find ourselves in the first place as i said i base my arguments on the constitution mm -hmm. that can make it possible okay because if you look at it we have already factions that are vying for presidency which already makes it already difficult the grand north they are there we've gotten their outing several times whether they are really serious or not, but we should not take it for granted. It means that they too are thinking that what was yours or what was theirs, they did not enjoy it to the fullest. And so they are thinking of... After 20 years? Yeah, that, that's what they are thinking. That, the argument is very clean and clear. That it was taken from them halfway under unclear circumstances that they think that it's supposed to come back to them to finish it in an honorary manner. That is the argument. And if you look at it, they too at a point in time have a huge, that is a, 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 a huge number. That is also thinking in that direction. Now, even though parts of the other parties also have influence in that area, but we should not undermine this particular group that they have been making utterances and even going on media and talking about how they too are willing to get a showdown come presidential election. So if you look at this uh, uh, aspect, then coupled now with maybe others, other political parties, as I said, the system deliberately made allowed uh, the, the legalization of these many parties in order to fragment them so that it gives <coughs> kudos to the ruling party. But then, I keep saying that, first, if you look at our number, because what you said quite right, when uh, New John was there, you know, that was a period when uh, multipartism was coming into the country. There was a wind of change that was blowing across the country at that time. And people were yearning for change, which means even French speaking were yearning for change. And at that time, the issue of whether it was coming from which direction was not longer the problem because as the only and leading opposition party, there was no French leading opposition party at that time. The only one was the SDF, which many of them aligned behind because they needed to see somebody new. Unfortunately, things did not go the way they envisaged. Now, within that period, water has passed over the bridge. And passing over that bridge has changed several things at a point in time. Such that if we postulate, if we talk about an anglophone president now, we start asking, first, what support? Is it possible for him to have a support? Presidential election we're talking about is a few months from now. It's not even up to a year. That's the ground we're talking about. Now, do we think that even if Medusala comes in now to give us, say, 80 billion to put on the ground, are we sure we'll be able to get a perfect groundwork? I mean, from now to the election period that is in less than a year from now or so. Now, if not possible, it means there's already a problem. So at the end of it, we think that while we are looking at the political, which each and every one would have loved, to, would have loved it to happen. My, myself, I would have loved to see that I have an Anglophone president whom I think that maybe the issue of um, uh, marginalization might, would have reduced, would have seen a new win of administration that we have never seen since we were born, since our great-grandfathers were born during the period of independence. But now, if it is not possible, it means that some of us who move in line with jurists, because with CRM, almost uh, most of the top brand, uh, personalities in the party are, are, are lawyers, so to say. So who move now with jurists will think that, since as it could be a little bit difficult, now, our fight has been, let us first of all get a push in the electoral process that tells you that, let us function like Canada. Once we pick up that, it means that the issue of an anglophone becomes very possible because when the mandate comes, whether you like it or not, it is a turn no, for, for anglophones. So they find whether the person who comes from Norway or Southwest is not the issue because whether it is Norway or Southwest, only that it will be an anglophone. But then, where are we when the kangaroo system technically and uh, in a decisive and also dubious manner decides to put the question the way they are, where everything is treated only to those who build up the majority? And at the end of it, as I said, money plays the role. How much do we have? Because we need to be asking this thing from time to time, Mr. Liu. Diaspora, I, I hope people are getting us because you will blow grammar up there. Now, what uh, what role are you doing, putting in place, to make sure okay. that you push even the topics we're okay. talking about okay. here? Okay. Yes, uh, Actually, uh, yeah, you, 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 people, you people are monopolizing this. Um, uh, and Jiwum Emmanuel, let's look at how ready, when you, you, you look at those that um, even aspire to 
want to stand for the position of our president of the republic. We saw uh, Barisar Karemuna made that attempt, though finally he had to uh, merge with uh, Professor Maurice uh, Kamto. Um, Honorable Joshua Osi uh, stood for elections under the banner of the Social Democratic uh, Front, but we also have seen uh, Chief Justice Aya Paul Abine who stood, who went in. Uh, there is, uh, is this Nyam, Nyamjo? Nyamjo George. George in, uh, in Boya, Boya, who attempted. When you look at, we have seen Aya Paul who went, um, Joshua Osi, Frunzi and the rest. When you look at what obtains today, do you see that, pre that preparedness in Anglophones? Well, uh, I want to start by saying that if we must wait for an ideal moment to do something, then we will never do anything. Okay. Let's give time, time. Uh, no matter how short the time may be, what supersedes should be the ideologies and the desires of the people. Because if we were to keep playing on the flanks of time, mm -hmm. then means that nothing will ever be done. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't want to say whether they are prepared or not, but we can use this platform to prepare them in a very short while. Depending, they have the message, the right message to pass across to Cameroonians. I want to take you back to the period of 1992 when I was still a kid. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are not aware that Fundi was not the person originally mandated to run for SDF. At that time, the people had consented. You had people like Mete Yondo Black. Mete Yondo Black is not an Anglophone. You had people like uh, uh, Cardinal Tumi, who was the candidate that was designed from the civil society to run things for a period of maybe two, three years to normalize issues. But when he turned it down... When was that? I mean 1992. Yes. You can bear your findings. These are things we have, they are documented. You can bear your findings. When Tumi turned down that call, that popular call, to lead the coalition for that short period of time, that is when the people, together with the francophones, that decided to put in Fundi. What am I saying? Fundi came up and succeeded because he had the support of the masses, starting from those who had mandated him to take the coalition forward. Mm -hmm. And we saw all what happened. When he left from that period with people, you know, if you want to go far, go with the people. But if you want to go fast, go alone. And that fastness will not take you that far. When he left that point, came down to a situation where SDA became a party on its own. We saw the results. When, why am I making all this analysis? When we look at the situation of today, I think of somebody who is internationally recognized, Christopher Fomini. I think of somebody like Senior Batonia Akeremu, <coughs> internationally recognized. We have people like Metro Agbobala, internationally recognized. We have the Prince Koso, the uh, Barista Ashu Emmanuel, and the rest, well recognized. The question now is, at their own faith, where they come from, are they identified by their own people? Do their own people, from where they come from, even though the ideologies that these people have about running, some of them are not even aware that these people want to vie for the post of the presidency. They, that's why I say, if we have to keep playing with time, even in the next 100 years, nobody will be prepared. But if we can rally behind somebody, just say these names I have cited here, come together, make a, a, a consultation, and decide that amongst all of us that have sat here as Anglophones, let's project one person as the flag bearer of the Anglophone coalition beat for the presidency. At that time, the goal and the message will be clearer to the Anglophones and the Francophones who are even for the ideology that an Anglophone should take after Mr. Bia, as it was agreed mm -hmm. in Fuma in 1961. And if you cannot go by this way, I would think that the only possibility an Anglophone would have in this country to get into a treaty can only come through constitutional re-amendment because the former agreement in Fuman was that the vice will come from east of the, if the vice is from east of the Mongo, the president will be from west of the Mongo. 
But things later change with all the manipulations on the constitution and whatsoever. So I want to think that there are two things standing here. If these people I have named, who are of high international and national repute, even though at one point when you look at them, I don't know whether it is fear making them not to stand out tall to tell Cameroonians that this is exactly what, because we saw in 2018, a lot of people believed in senior barrister Akeremono. By the last minute, he threw his weight behind a francophone. And those are some of the things that when we are talking about, I don't feel very comfortable talking about this anglophone candidacy. Because at one point you might be thinking that you are for them, and at the dying minute, they twist the dice, and it goes to favor maybe what the opinion of the people stands for will not this time, will not at that particular time align to the opinion of the person they thought was going to be their flag bearer. So it's a bit complicated. We have only two things here. Either these people come out clearly with their goals. I am vying for a 2 d And the idea is sold to the people or we send back the ball to Mr. Bia, who is the guarantor of the constitution so that he can go back and retouch the very constitution I've been touched severally okay. to give chance for an anglophone to rule this country. Because as he stands now, that is the cry of almost every Cameroonian, including francophones, who are instead championing the cause that they think that it is time to try an anglophone and see how it goes. So whatsoever we are doing here, if these people are not prepared to come up together in one word, in one word, are they prepared? Because elections are coming in next year. Do you we say we, if we, we are to base on preparedness? Even mm -hmm. Mr. B is not prepared. Nobody is prepared in this country. We, what has been prepared in this country all along has been fraught, and we are all aware. If I have said here, if we are to base on preparedness in terms of time, Mr. Liu, even in any one day, you will never yeah. be prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, CRM uh, is let's prepared. Ask, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, um, you are of the civil society. Yes. The only are. person who can say the CPDM is not prepared are CPDM militants. The yeah. only person who can assert that the CRM is not prepared are the CRM. Are the CRM. And as if I'm sure that... I CRM, say nobody. Let, let me I come. say nobody. Yeah, let me come. Let me come. CRM did a nationwide reorganization of the basic organs and yes. ended up with a convention and that convention produced a flag bearer for their elections Good. the sdf did nationwide reorganization and it ended in a convention that produced a flag bearer when the cpdm does let me come C C cpdm did reorganization two years they are the first who did we saw all the fightings at everywhere. Yeah. And their constitution says that they have a natural candidate. Yeah. Who is the CPDM? I don't want us to give a... a yeah. Who is... Who is uh, Paul <laughs> thank thank you. Thank mm. you very much. Let, yeah. let me lie, Mr. Liu, just yes. one minute. Okay. I wanted to say that mm. whatever we are saying here, mm -hmm. if we are still taking the pens to come here and say what we say, it is part of our patriotism for the nation. Mm. We have seen how our country has suffered from all what it is suffering. So if something is not done by these people, and mm -hmm. I insist, there is no better time to prepare than for a better ideology to pass so to the they people. Take home, uh, everything will be that we are playing to the, wishful thinking, the which take, cannot take over a nation. The take home from Mr. Ndewum is that it is not too late. Eh? Yes. If we are to wait, we are to wait until you say the until the time, time where it is everybody is going to mm -hmm. roll a red carpet Thank for you. an anglophone to walk. We are yeah, never yes. going to to be there. But somebody is writing that anglophones themselves are very very divided amongst themselves. Um, in ideology, yes, mm. but they are united the same way with those of the east of the Mongo mm -hmm. with the following factor: one, we are united with high cost of living. Two, mm -hmm. we are united with the increased power cut within our nation. Three, we are united with a low standard of living within our nation. Four, we are united within the poor health system across the ten regions. Five, we are united within a complex education system that is actually making people to think that there is a need to rethink the educational system, which should be more on real, uh, uh, resilient and not just people reading. So in terms of people looking at the political ideology, I think that is not the focus for any nation. Mm -hmm. And if you move to the streets of the Northwest region, you come to Douala, the same story have echoed, reign in the minds of all these persons, 
irrespective of their tribe, race, gender. So the idea about looking at the fact that Anglophones are divided, they may be divided in ideology, but they are united in one focus. And I want to say this, that it is not too late. In fact, it is not late for any Anglophone who wants to identify himself as a presidential candidate to actually vie in and campaign actively. Let me give you a practical example. We have 10 regions of this nation. Mm -hmm. Of that 10 regions, it, that is 10 visits. 10 visits, multiply that by 30. Mean that each month, take just one month, intensive visit for the nation. You can do a nationwide tour within one month. Now, add another month. That's two months. You cannot add the different divisions and subdivisions. You add an extra month, that's three months, you can visit the subdivisions and other major towns, which means that for a day, if you are in Boya, you make sure you take Boya, you visit Moyoka, you visit Kumba, you visit Limbe for a day. That visit is very important, which is called meet the people tall. Now, if you do that, within one month, you can cover a good number, a good area within Cameroon, and you can say you have actually visited the 10 regions. Now, cumulatively, if you have another force, like Dewoom talked about the coalition, if you have another force, let's say you have another force that also does that same visit, it means that the two of you are actually making a tour within the nation. It is not too late. We are not that vast as Nigeria, where we can say that we cannot meet all the divisions and all the regions within a very short period of time. Now, how ready are Anglophones? They are very much ready. How are they ready? They are ready because every household, whether it is in Kikaikilaiki, whether it is in Fais village, uh, where you also always say the Gunuku village, whether it is in Kwakwa, whether it is in Nake, whether it is in Lebialem, they know that there comes a time when they cannot enjoy electricity for 24 hours. They know there comes a time when they cannot have put basic food on their table. They know there comes a time when their take home cannot take them halfway for them to conveniently check they know all these realities whether it is here in fengu Drumbange, whether it is in new bail whether it is in bafusam so i want us to keep away the ideology that the people of the east of the mongo can never vote an anglophone they can and they will and they should why and they can they know there comes a time where we must also uh, go to the other side and see how it goes I have been talking with most of my friends of East, friends of East of the Mongo, and they keep telling me, "Look, ah, say me ke on cherche un president anglophone. Say me, on a aiju etela ebiya etela. Say connect it. On change on voit comment ça doit se passer. And if you do opinion poll, sadly enough, we have civil society that don't do opinion polls or that don't sample the opinions of people because in a functioning democracy, it is civil society that drive that gets this data." And now he be able now to tell politicians that these are the data and this is what you can make home. Look at America, opinion polls are flying left, right, center. Kenya, opinion polls are flying right, center. Nigeria that just did the election in 20, 2022, February, opinion polls were moving helter skelter. Come to Cameroon, ask a basic statistics to any civil society organization. How many police stations do we have in the entire territory? They may not be able to tell you at a go. How many divisions and subdivisions do we have that you need to cover to win an election? They may not be able to tell you as they go. So what we are saying is that this is a moment where we have Agua Balan Kongo Felix, we have Christopher Fominion, we have Barista Akeremuna, we have Senior Barista Ashu uh, Emmanuel, we have a good number of them, we have Prince Ekoso. These guys only need to come up on one day and do a tour, not even announcing their presidency, to shake the regions, to visit the region, to make the region know that, hey, you know what, something is coming. And I want to bet you that when we look at why Mr. Tazi talked about the fact that 1992 is not now, I beg your pardon, it has, it's a change. Instead, the more opinion that people have for now is, is, is better than 1992. 1992 was movement, change man as it was a movement pull changement in which the SDF was taken as a flag bearer because SDF at that time was a party pushing for multi-party politics. There is a win of change, a win of change of good governance. There is a win of change of changing the old guard. Everybody is talking about that discussion that the, the, some people have been there for long. There's that win of change, and the people are ready. Let me tell you that if you go down to the street, like when you receive message, you hear, Mr. Kum, we are ready, but who are we going to vote for? But who are we going to vote for? But who are we going to? Mm. But who are we? It is an evident that all of these guys are ready. In this generation, 
You do an opinion. Look at the pop, just the population of the English speaking in Douala is very high. Look at the population of English speaking across the nation. We are not done. The last census that was done was in 2005. Which we have not yet had the statistics because if we have the statistics, it enables political stakeholders to tell that hey, this is the number of anglophones, this is the number of anglophones, this is the number of these people who have. Till now, nobody has this data, and so nobody can conveniently tell you that the people of the northwest and southwest cannot produce a candidate. Because which data are we going to talk about? Since the censor was carried out to date, whether the person who is supposed to publish the censor is checking, we don't know, but we don't have the data. So, if you look at this profile, I have a few profiles here. One, Barrister, Senior Barrister Abu Balan Felix. How can he? He can because of his work that he has done. He can because we see the potential in him. He, he appears to be a statement. Look at uh, Christopher Fomini. He can because he has a wealth of experience across the national, international scene. We look at someone like Barrister Akere Muna. He can because he has a wealth of experience. Grow up as a son of a politician, also have an international experience and fighting against corruption, like you saw he won an award of Glencore. Not even keep aside, there is also this a very important person I, I almost forgot, who is also uh, the Tumfo. Tumfo is also a very, very important person. He's somebody that has a charisma that I think that he can add his voice. So if you have two for uh, 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 Nico, he's somebody that also can. I think that these are people, uh, Mr. Leo, let me not take much of a time, but in the nutshell, if you have just five anglophones that have called, that's it, we are going to visit Northwest, Southwest, we are visiting anglophone community in this area in Douala, we are visiting this French community, we are just coming to visit. Let me tell you, the dance will change. Without even saying that they are going for an election. And it is not late, and it is not they too late, late. and it is, the moment is now. They just need one month. We are talking about, we are, we, let's, let's talk about uh, September, October, November, December. That four months is enough to move from all the nooks and crying in Cameroon. Can they? Should they? Will they? I think they can, they should, and they will. Okay, um, the kangaroo man. In the womb and uh, they, they are sounding a very positive uh, uh, note out here the belief that it can happen but what what, what is keeping um them from outrightly telling the world that we are ready and available to take the button yes all, all we need is uh, your backing i think mr leo the thing is that these persons have weighed the dance on the field okay they are not stupid guys they are very intelligent. Mm. They have weighed the dance steps of the juju. And they know that the dance steps of this juju will not surely be friendly if we decide to take this step. I've said living in a kangaroo system, it is true, you have to fight. But when you fight, there are some results that are realistic and results that could be an illusion for the time being. I repeat, could be an illusion for the time being. First things you ask yourself, if we are fighting, for example, like the persons we just mentioned, do we have what it takes to get that universal suffrage on the ground? Because if I am popular in Bonaberry, it doesn't mean that I can win a presidential election. We talk about a presidential election which is not the same like council or parliamentary where you can conveniently craft a constituency and then you take a short period of time and you put the results with the limited resources and you arrive at. Now, if you have this, we have one thing that is clear. Most of us are popular, yes. But you could be popular like a footballer, are not popular as a politician that they can vote you. Because it depends on which platform you are coming from. You could be popular as a lawyer, international, repeated, but when it comes to the issues of leadership of a country, some other persons don't see you that, that way. And so it becomes a little bit complex. But then, I said earlier that the persons who we just mentioned would have equally. But you realize there was a time, let me take by Mr. Agbobala, when the agro crisis was coming up, there was even a time that uh, his name featured within the uh, background, not him, sir, I mean from uh, the, the population. And you got another group that equally took on that name very seriously. First, some gave him names, black leg. Some, you understand all of this. But that was someone who was fighting on the peaceful aspect that things should be resolved in a peaceful manner. But there were some schools of thought who did not see it that way. They felt that he was instead compromising. Whereas that was not the way he was looking at it. Now, if you look at um, Dr. Christopher Fumino, for example, that's somebody that we know, an ambassador to food issues in Africa from Ukraine. And we know all what he has done equally in, in, at the level of promotion of democracy. But now, if you ask him, first of all, 
Sir, can you stand for us as a presidential candidate? I don't think he'll be able to tell you. He will tell you yes. And why will he not say yes? Because he will look at it and know that the groundwork has not been well put for us to get this. And that's why I said that in most countries, people don't understand. If you go to Nigeria, now let us take the current president, Tinubu. People know, people are still to understand him because he has been the maker of presidents in Nigeria. He has been the maker of presidents in Nigeria. Which means that kind of multi billionaire that he could stand behind you and say, Far, move ahead. Give me your plan. He gets technocrats and put around you and put in the money before you know it. You are in this community, just like what a uh, speaker just said here. You are in this community giving water. You are in this community digging borehole. You are in this community doing this and that. And before you know it, people start feeling your presence and feeling who you are. But as I said, being a president is not biscuit. Let's not be babbling here on air because it's not biscuit we're talking about here. It means that the man in Mora must be able to believe in you. Do you tell me that within four months you can convince a man in Mora who had taken, who had been with somebody he thought could be his president for rover maybe three, four, five, eight, six years and preparing himself to put a person you just surface and tell him that uh, Omaru Mustafa, you know what? They are carrying you have the dumb border. I have a candidate for you. We do we think it can just easily swim into his head that no, this is my candidate. No, no, I'm no longer with you. I've seen that candidate I've just brought from somewhere that it can be no. so these are the things. So these persons we mentioned are technocrats. They have weighed the terrain on the ground, they have understand the political gimmicks of Cameroon. And they have looked at it knowing fully well that, but if we start now, are we sure we will not have fight back from our own persons? Because the biggest problem of a fight, be president career, is when your own hometown is not with you. Your own person you believe could see your ideology are not with you. Now, if you begin now, and tomorrow you have some few persons in the center who are with you, whereas maybe you come from maybe a barefoot, and the people in barefoot say, ah, that man forget him be president. It really defeats purpose because sometimes you realize that most of those who have become presidents started in their home. They started galvanizing support from their own homeland, home area where they come from, and then it was now growing, gathering momentum, and extending to other areas. So the real thing is that these technocrats that we have just mentioned, high intellectuals of the first order, have equally looked at it, and they have realized if you talk with Bastard Nico Halley, for example, who is a peace a crusader. Often you will discover that he is very comfortable in the peace crusading aspect. Because he knows that getting into the boat of a presidency will be another complex issue that could even derail him from his peace crusading. So he will always tell you, I am very okay here. My problem is that let us all live in peace. So you see that all along taking a look at this, it is a matter of mind I keep saying. Have we been thinking of that? If we thought of Anglophone president just now, <coughs> will they dream that they dream? But if we are thought of Anglophone president, Probably two years ago, four years ago, the it means that the mechanism of getting the Anglophone president, like senior barrister Ashu Emmanuel, would have been put in place early on. Do we have what it takes to replace ourselves? Wait, 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 far, far, you give the impression that it is now, this is something that has been spoken for years today. How, how, why, why do you give the impression that it is now? The momentum is now. Yeah, but, but, but it had been for years, Mr. Leo, as you are saying. But the momentum did not warrant I have, us. I, I have Paul Abine went for elections. Yes, I have Paul Abine. He's not an Anglophone. He is a bona fide Fruity, Anglophone. Fruity has been there. He's an Anglophone. Of course, we know that it's alleged that he won uh, and prof, it was his. Judge, Prof. Judge, Nyam in the University, in the university of, of. He God. has been there. So they have been why there. Do, why do you give the impression that nobody has uh, thought of that? No. That it is today that. It is not an impression, Mr. Leo, I'm giving. Mm. The reality is that they went. Just like you are asking, how prepared were they at that time? If I take on a mission, for example, if you ask those who went in, let me keep everything aside. Are you giving the impression that no Anglophone has prepared himself or is ready for the majority of an Anglophone? Mr. Why Leo. don't you also think that they can rally behind him because he Mr. Is, Leo, you he, he's, he's, he, he's, yes. an, he's an Anglophone and leading yes. a political party. Yes, this is what I'm saying here, Mr. Liu. Yes. We have Osi Joshua who is an Anglophone. Yes. Osi Joshua can equally be a president. Is he not ready? It is true. Yes. He is ready from his party. Very mm -hmm. true. Not so. Mm -hmm. I am talking about realities on the ground. Now, if we get reality on the ground, what do we find out? I said we are in a dispensation whereby people will not just gather behind you because they have different areas where they divide themselves and they are attached to. That's the reality. 
I equally told you about the issues of well, the Lord. Well, Muna was there last time, and yeah. I'm not sure he has resigned. For, no, for we're not sure he has resigned, Mr. Liu. So, so we're not sure he has resigned. Well, so, what we are asking is, yes. those who went in, keeping aside Nick John Fronti, that we know what transpired, or we understand what transpired from each information we on the ground. Mm -hmm. Now, if you keep Nick John Fronti aside, now, for all those who are postulating, let's take, for example, Litmus test. Those who postulated, what were their scores at that point in time? Because you could use that to start assessing whether were they actually closer to the victory or not. If I go in, for example, and I come in where probably as an anglophone, I am taking a position, keeping aside Nick John, maybe I have 5% uh, or maybe 6 or 18%. It's to tell you that the groundwork that was supposed to have been done <coughs> still has to be done because if I was closer to the presidency, in now, if you analyze it political wise, you could say, but these guys went and they were closer to like what Nick John was supposed to. It means that they cannot fully get there. But look at the distances where we, we recorded. Now, we are saying here that we have a caravan going. Now, O.C. Joshua has moved. First, we understand what he, he meant when he went to the south. Now, taking that particular wahala that he got there, which has not disturbed him because he is still determined ever than before, mm -hmm. which is a possibility. But the main issue is, let us take the first issue, Mr. Liu. Mm -hmm. You want to be an anglophone. The first thing is you ask, who are those at their backyard, first of all, with you? That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. As I said, if I want to be the president of this house, and I already get the room in one way, probably Javis will say, no, that you cannot be. Maybe my brother cannot be. Automatically, it starts jeopardizing because if in the house I have some persons who think I cannot be, it means I defeat the purpose of a man who's at a distance to say that, no, if his brother can say he cannot be, then it means, are you sure he can be? What am I saying? We have this issue of Anglophones fighting Anglophones already. It's already a worry within. Now, I, I talked about tribalism already. I talked about the xenophobic aspects that are taking place. These are the issues that are driving across to let us know that to be, yes, it will not be a doubting task. Are we sure we have done the groundwork to arrive at where we are supposed to arrive? It is a million dollar question. We will speak quite the right to satisfy some persons watching other. No, we can be, we can be, we can be. But the question is, deeply in our hearts, do we think that the stage has been made level? For Anglophone to wear that shoes and swim to okay, the president, Mr. 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 Tazi, still a million dollar I'll ask this question to you and uh, same to the womb. He is talking about the stage level ground. Are we not saying that we are not daring? Who is going to prepare the level ground? Who is going to roll out a golden uh, carpet for us to walk into? Who, who, who actually was given power? If you don't fight for it, if you do yeah. not believe and dare, <coughs> Mr. Kum, I think power is never given. Power mm. is always taken. Mm. And if I want to say something on this issue, the first thing I want to say is that uh, I see home my opinion that time in this thing matters a lot. Time matters a lot. Money matters. We have very qualified. We've just listed a few, but we have very qualified anglophones. Mm -hmm. In Cameroon, around the world, despite the issue of dual nationality, that is another question mark on some candidates, including those I've mentioned here, that are very qualified and that they can make wonderful presidents in this country. When it comes to the qualification of Anglophones, I think we have wonderful guys. But time for them to market themselves, it doesn't suffice for somebody to go to a place. Visiting a place is different from winning the minds of voters in that place. Is, these are two very, very different things. So, in my opinion, I see who that time matters. Time matters. Secondly, are Anglophones ready to work together and put forth a, a single candidate? Because I think that is one, one, one very strong yeah. factor that could, within a short time, galvanize enough voters around the country. If Anglophones are okay, for this purpose, we have only one candidate. And all Anglophones begin by saying, this is the candidate presented by Anglophones. That would then open the door for our fellow Francophones who are thinking that it is time for an Anglophone president to vote. But is there any way for Anglophones to unite now and present one presidential candidate? That's the next question. And we must do that if, in my opinion, my analysis is that the way forward for an Anglophone president will be first Anglophones uniting and putting up one candidate. Or the other way through the Constitution where it will, be, it will give us alternative... Uh, 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 route to the presidency. And I want to say to you that one thing we are a bit, some of us are ignoring is the issue of dual nationality. There are certain names, including those that have been called here, that they have nationalities abroad. And to contest for presidential elections in Cameroon require that they have Cameroon nationality. We don't know what 
this is their personal life. We don't know what's happened with their nationality. But uh, for up to the best of my knowledge, for now, I know that Cameroon law does not allow for, for dual nationality. And so um, to, to answer your question, Mr. Kuma, I think that we, 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 we still have a long way to go. Eh? But who, up, who will rule the carpet? It will be done by us. It is the willingness for us to do. And to a certain degree... Are we not, or are we not ripe for it? Mr. We are very ripe. We have the so, very so prepared when, when you, talk, you see talk from... We lack cooperation. No, we lack... No, we lack... The tr we may not believe... You may not believe in Mr. Kuhn, mm. but I believe that Anglophones are not cooperating enough. Enough. They are not working together enough. Mm. If they... If they, For us, for them to do this, we must first work amongst us and produce a single presidential candidate that all Anglophones will throw their weight behind that person. The yeah, fact that one, I think that's a starting point. Because if we, okay, if all these people have listed here, if they all put up their candidature, no, but we already have Joshua C. We have uh, our barrister Akere Muna. Are, are we still living in some? Those are, are those people who have listed ready to unify and sit down and take responsibility and say, okay, let this person be our president candidate and the rest will But they are there. What stops Anglophones from running <laughs> No, Mr. Kum, it is not Anglophones. It is those guys. For instance, let's take the case of uh, his, his party, MRC, mm -hmm. and take the case of SDF. Okay. Can they, can, I mean, they take two uh, uh, Anglophone parties. Like the party of uh, Mr. No, Mona. There's no, there's no Anglophone party. No, no, no. I mean, Anglophone parties that Anglophone are led, by, led by Anglophone, yes. yes. But Anglophone parties are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yes. parties are led by Anglophones. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the one of Mr. Muna and the one of uh, the SDF, for instance, those mm -hmm. two parties are led by Anglophones. Mm -hmm. Are they ready to sit down together and say, okay, for this thing to work, we are ready to say that party A, maybe the Mr. Osi for SDF, I will step down for you to stand as a presidential candidate. They will, will, will fall behind you. Mm -hmm. At that level, if they can cooperate, that would be a wonderful starting point, in my opinion, that the other people will follow. They say, okay, these two guys. They have put up a, a single candidate we should throw away behind them. And I want to tell you, we may some of us may not like this, but for us to win more francophone votes, despite all the situation that the whole country is going through, if we have a unified candidate, it provides a better ground for us to win more votes than if we send in more than one anglophone candidate for presidency. And to rule the carpet open, as they say, it is in the hands of anglophones. And it must start with anglophone cooperation to produce a single candidate. Okay, so that's uh, my po that's the way I look at it. Okay, that's the way you look at it. Please stop calling, just send a text and I'll read them out. Um, where is where is the problem now? Because you sound very positive and that you think that it is time to start. Why not? Why not even start, even if it is late and uh, die trying that to say things are unfavorable for us? Well, I will just be repeating myself. Mm. Like I said a while ago, if you are waiting for the ideal moment for something to be done, I am telling you that nothing will ever be done. Mm -hmm. Everything starts from the first tip. You must not tell me that <coughs> God, these people have been working on the ground. There are a lot of them that we talk with them. That's why I said the, 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 the fear factor seems to be manifesting in some of them. But then, it doesn't stop what they are thinking come 2025. Uh, this, let me take you to U.S. This is Biden who dropped down yesterday. Biden has been there <laughs> from the time he took office and he dropped yesterday. Do you want to tell me that the Democrats will not have a candidate? And they have just three months. And they have just three months. They will not have a, a, a candidate because Biden dropped or somebody will give me the philosophy that his dropping was pre-prepared before <laughs> that yesterday. No, Mr. Liu. I am telling you that in politics, a lot of things matter. We have the financial capacity. We have the figures. And we have the time. All of these things put together plays a vital role. But looking at the political situation of Cameroon and the economic life of Cameroonian, there is nobody who needs time to prepare to take it to the in Cameroon. Our problems are already enough preparation for Cameroonians to see in somebody and know that this is the place to take us out of the gutters. I said we don't Simple. need to go preaching. Simple. Our, our, our problems have been in us for years. And that is already enough preparation that every Cameroonian 
can look at Mr. Tazi and say, this is the man we have been looking for. We don't need to say we will have to take 100 years yeah, yeah, before we program that. I say, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a step and does not, doesn't end with that one step. Those steps have been taken already. Yeah. Yes. So we cannot keep playing to the gallery that time, this time, that. Except people do not want change in Cameroon. Me who want change. If tonight, these people I cited here, any of them present himself as the Anglophone candidate, I will go out to the field and I will be shouting at the top of my voice that we need them at A2D. For how long did Mr. Abia prepare to take over A2D? Mm -hmm. Who prepared him? When did he communicate his preparedness to Cameroonians? That is only today that we think Barista uh, Bobala, Meta Keremuna, our for me, uh, uh, Prince Ekoso, all must tell us how prepared they were. Mm. How prepared were they? Now let's be logical. It's not because we use some political slogans, political undertones how long to did detail Obama, people. How, how long, long did, did Obama, Obama take to prepare, take to prepare himself? Mm. Trump that just came from 2016. Mm. Mr. Leo, <laughs> we are talking as if we are strangers in Cameroon. Tama Javis a while ago cited a couple of problems that those problems alone are already enough campaign for every Cameroonian to stand up and say, no, enough is enough. This is somebody who can change Cameroon. It's only in Cameroon that we think we must glorify some individuals to make them become president. No. Every Cameroonian, if I had my means today, I would get up tomorrow and stand for the presidency. I just ask a simple question. If somebody can respond to me, then how prepared was Mr. Bia before taking over A2D? Has he not been here for, there for 42 years? These people are in Cameroon. They master the problems of Cameroonians. They master the difficulties of Cameroonians and they master the political difficulties of this country. They are aware. What is stopping us from being optimistic and throwing our weight behind them? Now, that is what, what Cameroonians need now. What makes you feel that they don't want to put forth put for their candidature? Who told you that they don't want to put their candidature? Yeah, have they done it? You are speaking I, for them. No, listen. No, no. Until, until, except uh, we are until, not in communication until, with them. Until the electorate, I will not until, until, I will yes, when the electorate are invited, that is when we are going to know. Oh. That's when you will know because many persons are planning. But before are, then, we have yes. to be preparing yeah, the minds yeah. of Cameroonians and preparing their minds so that they should know. Yeah, 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 that yeah, this yeah, is yeah, what Cameroonians yeah, are yeah, wishing for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why. See, when, 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 when Mr. Fai was talking about the issue of popularity, I was mm. laughing because uh, one of the key ingredient of you winning an election popularity has at least 40 percent yes whether we like it or not even 45 40 percent the rest of the other percentage come now with competent record and also come with the confidence the people have on you now this is what i'm saying mr you mm -hmm. when you want to win an election you must first of all say your face to the people the people must know you in, in person. This must be prior before electorate accord. Look at what is happening now in Nigeria. Where is Peter Obi? He's moving from one state to another, one local government to another, one ceremony to another. He has not relented his effort. He lost the election, but did he relent? No, he has not. Look at Trump. When Trump was removed in 2020, some stayed from one campaign tree to another one campaign. Now, our own politicians, which the regular politicians who are telling us today that popularity is no way, that we don't have what it takes for an angry one to become president, are camping as rely on the in those days system of politics where you only wait when electorates are called, then you start doing rallies. But they forget to understand that there is a meet the people store, which is not a campaign rally. But it's so you meet and greet the people, which they have done it at the level of their conversion. Now, what it takes now, an Anglophone, what we are saying, our Anglophone brothers need to do is to do this talk. To say, okay, today I'm going to visit students in the University of Boya and ju just go and greet the students. Today I'm going to Moya Market to visit Moya Market. Mami, good morning. Mami, how are you? Barista Gobala, I say, Maka Salona today. Mami, how are you? That is not a political rally. That is a meet the people store. Tomorrow you are in Bonamusa the market. With your own population, you have mobilized a few people in Bonamusa who are also well known 
Ou en a take you to the market. Eh, voici mon frère qui l'a venu. Da, 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 da. The next day, il y a un mort roi. The next day, il y a un new bell. Mr. Leo, I want to ask this politician who are telling us that they, we don't have what it takes or the stage are not there. Is that not a stage set? Who will stop you from moving from one place to another? Look at what is also happening in Kenya. Kenya, prior to the election, their leaders were visiting churches every day. Today, they will fellowship in this church. The next day, they fellowship in this church. It is also a strategy. How many of our political leaders are visiting churches just to go fellowship? It's enough for you to market yourself. And not for you after the, the, the announcement, you do the Thanksgiving, that, oh, this person has come to visit us, where I came to greet you people. The stage is now, my dear, on your phones. That is the stage. Let, let nobody fool you that uh, yet we were told that uh, we are so, um, that we were told that it is, it is not a biscuit for you to become president. Where is a school to become president? Is there a school that somebody goes and learns to become president? When you have the other presidents in Africa, which school did they attend? Which school did Tinubu attend to say they want to become president? We have what it takes. I keep repeating. And I also hear uh, my senior father here, Mr. Tazi, talked about the fact that we don't have the, the population it takes. I keep saying this, that no demographic as of 2015 has, 2005 has been released to date. And let me tell you, Anglophones or Francophones are united by 10 common factors. We all here, take your microphone to the street, take your microphone to Mutengene, take that same microphone, move right to, to East region, to the East region. They will tell you 10 different things. And let me shock you. When you look at what happened in 2007, or the, 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 the food crisis, and you look at what is happening now, when the mobile money issue was called, the additional tax that was added on mobile money, you saw how Cameroonians were agitating. It tells you that these are a people who are ready, but they need a Messiah. That Messiah has not shown himself physically. We are doing the groundwork and we are calling our leaders, this the Anglophone brothers, that this is the time for you to start moving from one town to another, greeting the people, telling the people you have come to see how they are faring and you want to see how they are doing. So that when electorate are not called, it's easy for you to do a rally. Because you cannot just come when they are called electorate and start doing a rally. When you have visited the people, the day you are coming now, you have already made disciples of all areas, all ages. We are coming as disciples, come and meet you. I also hear, yeah, I uh, we were told that um, uh, when Senior Barrister Bala during the period of the Anglophone crisis, he was called the Black Care. Yes, that was as a result of just the Anglophone crisis. Now we are looking at beyond. We are looking at the nation as it served. And believe me, he, he proved himself during the Anglophone crisis that he was that person that was willing to stand for a one and indivisible common with its diversity and its specificity with the Bijuria and bicultural. Because some few group of people wanted a total independence, those were those people that called him black leg. Now, we understand that that independence is delaying. What do we do? Why don't you look at a political solution? Why don't we rally behind such people? Our call to me here should be how can we motivate these people to kill fear? How can we motivate these people to come out of their, their clutches to say, yes, we are going in? If they don't want to announce it, they should start a visit. I will gladden my heart to see that I will see uh, uh, Dr. Christopher Formillon. I will see Senior uh, Barista Akeremuna. I will see Barista Agobala Felix. Just these three people on a regular basis say we are going to visit, we are going to meet our people, to greet them, we are just going to meet them. It is a message, and I will tell you that message will be felt from the heart of heart. And nobody will come and tell you that it is an illegal garden. No garden is illegal. It's like the woman decides to say today I want to go and visit the um, uh, bike riders in Bonaberry. Hi, bike riders, how are you people? Nobody will stop him. It's not a political rally. It is his right. But our politicians are used to the conventional rallies. They don't look at the reality. Times have changed. Politics have changed. Look at their Facebook. How many of them even engage you to actively on Facebook? How many of them go live regularly on Facebook to engage the youth and get their problems? This is what we expect. Our Facebook too, are they limited? But look at what MPs in, in Kenya are doing. You saw how an MP went on social media and apologized to the people that are sorry to have let you. So we are calling on our own brothers to use their social media platform once every Saturday. Go live, invite us the youth, let us have a political talk and start having this talk. So that it build the momentum, it is not too late. And I keep saying that we must look at different strategies. We are in a Gen Z generation. Keep aside those old politics. Politics has changed. It, there's no formula to win an election in this Cameroon now. 
Because the people who thought that they have what it takes is a lie. It just needs a small youth local strategy and you will take what it, you have what it takes. Thank you. Okay, I'll uh, have what it takes and um, <laughs> yes, you, you're smiling. It yes. looks like you still do not believe yeah, that. Uh, you know, I, I'm smiling because one, I don't want to be sentimental. Okay. In political analysis, when you become sentimental, you lost the track. You, th you think? Now, you what am I saying? You think? Yeah, think yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, no, they are sentimental. It's because they are not politicians. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, they are not. Uh, maybe, maybe. I, I, I maybe want to be very honest. Right? I want to be very honest. <laughs> I don't want to be sentimental because I'm a bona fide anglophone, 100 percent. Okay. But then, in political science, I will not want to carry an analysis that is more of that that that, that, that is far fetched from the reality. I want to get an analysis because. When you take the comparative analysis of like what Ndihum asked or was talking, uh, when, when did uh, Baba prepare, when did uh, Trump take to prepare and all the like? Now, first, we understand that we are carrying comparative politics in, in a two different, complete two different setting. I would agree when I get Javis talk about the comparison in terms of what is transpiring in Kenya, what is transpiring in Nigeria, it becomes very visible. When you carry out a political analysis because Obama took no time and arrived at this, the mentality of those who are said to be the father of democracy in America cannot be the same with those we are meeting here. Remember, we have a foundation that is built by the colonial masters on divide and rule. These things have an effect on us till now. Whether we blow grammar from here to tomorrow or not, it is a core reality. We have said with the system of divide and rule, promotion of tribalism and all like, by the system itself, which has been in our families for over decades, the moment I stand, the man who does not come from baby will not find it easy as per we are talking about. Now, when the wind of change was blowing, by the time multiple was introduced, people had that urge to get things changed faster. All right, Lee John came up and we saw the good scores he recorded, which brought even Francophones onto his side. After that, the mechanism in Yaoundé went back and readjusted mechanisms that make that also very complex for that particular scenario to repeat itself, which worked in his favor. Now, what am I saying here? The, th the thing is clean and clear. I will be one of the few Cameroonians who understand the kangaroo system to the fullest. And to say that there is no formula, like what Javis is saying, there is no formula, you know, blah, 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 you can just go to and win. Please, this person we have just called are not fools. They understand the grammar I'm talking about here. And they don't want to ridicule themselves because it was tried quite all right. So if I tell you, for example, Mr. Liu, mm -hmm. if we went for presidential, assuming that we're going for presidential election like the last one, but Sakeremu now was quite very much present. Now, we don't want to go into the nitty gritty why, at the nick of time, not so, he pulled mm -hmm. over to part of the CRM. We don't want to know what was because everybody has a right as a presidential candidate to, at the end of time or any time, to either move to another person or you maintain a stand as an individual. Mm -hmm. We understand that the results were quite devastating in what? A kangaroo system. Now, I don't want to get hopes to people where the hopes are not there to say that in our current quagmire, that has been characterized by an issue of assimilation. One, that is found in the foundation of the, uh, the foundation of our history. Two, the issue that has been that aspect of negligence on our part and the aspects of pressing hard on the anglophones even when it comes to recruitment and everything it will not be easy for that same system to show you mercy but now that no come and take a little way to that part where we're talking about the presidency now it is good to nurse hope are you saying i agree saying, with that let, let me cue you in. Q. are you saying that there is um a machinery that has been put in place to bar the way to anglophones and if if that if that were uh your thoughts now, we know the problems that are being faced mm -hmm. by your national president, Professor Maurice Cantu. Is he done that because he's an Anglophone? Let me answer now clear and clear. Yes. The machinery has been put in place not today. And what machinery is it? No, I, but I cited is, the machinery. Is, is I'm Professor coming. Maurice Cantu I'm is coming. an Anglophone? I'm coming to the machineries. Okay. The machinery of divide and rule. He's facing it now, as I'm telling you. Yeah, but you get you get you. Maurice Cantu tells you that if there's a concours, for him to write, not to be, to, to baby to be the other side of the, listen, let him give and he will write. Yeah, but he's what not, does he mean? Means there are impediments. He's not an anglophone, he's a an anglophone. No, no, excuse me. Yeah. I am explaining to you that the factors that are disturbing us from getting to where we are supposed to be mm. are these factors of traversal based on the foundation which you could overcome. Quite the right, I'm not refusing. Mm. But the question is, under what disposition are you going to overcome as of now? Now, just like the woman asked, 
when uh, uh, President Pobia took over, what time did he take over? Was there any major problem before he took over? The scenario is completely different. It was handed. It was there was no election before President Pobia took over. It was a kind. Of, I don't, let's not go into negativity of what transpired between Pobia and Aijo before he he got over and became the president till today. That scenario was not by election, and so it took a different phase. Now, what basically am I bringing? I want to bring the message to Cameroonians that I keep saying. To be a president of the republic in Cameroon is not biscuit. I'll repeat that over and over. If you are in America, it can go because the terrain is leveled. When I say level means that what? The ideology of the people to reason their ideologies and to get across is different. When it's building a way by, as I said, tribalism has a center stage to play. You simply fight it through, which is not easy. Now, from every indication that we find here, when I tell people that it's not biscuit, the question is, we want to give Carolinas a wrong perception that you can be president in Cameroon even without preparing. That's the perception we are driving across indirectly. Because when I said that, no, when no, I said no, that, no, it no, takes no, no. time to build the, your, yeah. your platform. Yeah, but now, Jerry yeah. was making mention of something say, here. Are you saying that Jerry, anglophone politicians have not been preparing for They election. have not been preparing well, Mr. Kum Liu. Preparation is different oh, yeah. from preparing well. Because okay. you prepare well, the results are clear on the ground. But Professor Maurice no, what I'm saying. has been preparing well. No, he has been preparing. I don't want to... <laughs> the result? My issue is anglophones here. Okay, yeah. My yeah, issue yeah. anglophones here. Just land so that it comes. Yes, so what I'm saying is this. When we look at it, the issue of whether anglophones are prepared for this for presidential election or not, I keep on saying they are not yet prepared for it. Now, the lectures Javis gave, like what could be... Like visiting churches and all the like, it's a good lecture that he's giving. But the question is, is that what they've been doing? If that's what they have not been doing, they cannot do it now and arrive a few months from now. That's what I'm saying. The issue that you see that if somebody, let me say this clear and clear, please. We would like anybody to support an Anglophone mm -hmm. president. If they can take four months, as we are saying, on this platform to arrive at the presidency, I will resign from any political party I am and join them to the kingdom come. I bet you. To let you know why I'm talking about that, we can blue grammar to talk is easier. But the question is, we talk, it looks so sweet. But on the ground, practically, <laughs> do we mean that Within four months now, okay. Javis can blow this grammar and tell maybe uh, Barrister Ashu Emmanuel, follow this, I follow and he arrives at the presidency. But Barrister Ashu persistently has said here that he's going to be the next president of Cameroon. I made mention of something, Mr. Liu. No, no, no. no. That he all the presidential candidates who go in for know that they will not arrive at. Okay. Including CIA. I've said it's simple. You see, an anglophone, you see, you're not asking me. No, you don't say I said all the anglophone but now <laughs> who are getting in. But how possible could it be? If they were able to pick up a no, coalition no, like what he was saying, no, there's, there's it's not there. Tongue, you were saying something here. Uh, I mean, my brother over here. Fa, if they fa, were able, fa, fa, yes, there is power in the tongue. Yes, you are declaration. You are declaring that no anglophone. They are not ready as we say, Mister. No, it's not possible. <laughs> Let's not be deceiving people in the air. Yes, like, it's okay, not possible for now. Sure. Okay, so now away, 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 away from yeah. the political class of uh, the. Anglophones, can we not also identify some anglophones that can spring a surprise from within the civil society? And how is the anglophone civil society itself <coughs> driving this agenda? <coughs> Mr. Kum, I think anglophones have a very strong civil society. Mm. A very strong civil society. When you ask your question, can we not draw from the civil society? The question is, are those civil society leaders ready to stand as presidential candidates? If yes, under which platform? We know how difficult it is for an independent candidate, presidential candidate, to go through in Cameroon. We know how difficult it is. We don't want to be labeled on that. So they are going to stand now under which political party for the civil society? They are going to stand under which political party? I mean, I keep saying this. The possibility, the possibility exists for an anglophone person in Cameroon. Don't get me wrong. They exist. When it comes in terms of competency and qualification, we are very competent and yep. qualified and reforced. But one thing we are lacking, as per my, my observation now, we lack cooperation. And for that possibility to materialize faster within the short time that we have, we need cooperation and we need to present a single candidate. Yeah, but we are talking about civil society. You are a member of Cameroon civil society. Yes. He is a member of civil society. Yes. And they are driving the agenda that I'm asking, that what are you doing? And you are still sounding very pessimistic instead of doing what you're supposed to do. Mr. Akum, the mm. truth is that when we civil societies talk to these political leaders, it's very difficult for them to click together. This is the truth. Yeah, and, 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 but, but, and it's been demonstrated but, over the years. the coalition start with you guys. 
No, form a very strong civil society coalition and impose on them. Mr. Kum, let me tell you something. <laughs> These people, when people don't listen to us, let me tell you. Okay. You see, since this media house started, mm. if people were following the programs of my media prime, mm. maybe Anglophones now have gotten to where it is because there's something I've noticed about Anglo uh, Cameroonians. Cameroonians are very intelligent people. If we tap on the intelligence of Cameroonians, we can do a lot of things. We have Cameroonians who are international conflict resolu resolution experts that can give advice and they resolve this. The truth is, uh, is this advice taken? I'm coming back to you. Okay. Is, are the, is the political class ready to take advice from the civil society? Because until they take that, they see that I agree, I take that advice, the results that that advice is intended for cannot be achieved. Cannot be achieved. This is the truth about so civil society. Yes, you can play your role. You can make your recommendations to the political parties, but it is left for the political parties with their cuts to know whether they are going to accept your suggestions or not. I'm saying this here that as of now, politicians like my brother here and the other anglophone politicians. The possibility for an Anglophone president exists is possible. We have the competent guy, but you people, we together, one, cooperate with civil society, as Mr. Kum is saying. Secondly, you should be able to synergize and present a single candidate and throw your full weight behind that, that candidate. Without that, if we present today, for instance, one, one an Anglophone president, if we present five Anglophone presidents today, what is the possibility that we will get to it? In fact, we will have already divided our vote to weaken ourselves. Yeah. And to weaken those of us, those who are supporting us from uh, across the Mongol. So if we put one candidate, one, the first is that the few votes in the house have been unified. Then others in the, then we can now bring in uh, Jarvis's uh, hypothesis of the unified factors of bad road, no food, food crisis, has you all of that. And then to galvanize the other people to say, okay, this is the situation. You are suffering, uh, you, are, you are in Bolonga, you are suffering the way I'm suffering. You are in Betua, you are suffering, you don't, you, don't, you are suffering the way I'm suffering. So let's try this guy. But until you put a single candidate, I'm sorry, we'll just be... <laughs> Blowing hot air. Hot air. I want to, I want to, to pick up from where Mr. Atazi, Mr. Atazi, mm -hmm. Atazi ended. We asked a question about what the civil society has been doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to unveil a lot of things on this platform. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people, including the top francophone politicians in this country that we in our coalition of civil society is going to be meeting in the days ahead what he's saying is very right our role is to meet them have first hand information on whether they are ready to form a coalition or not once we must have made all these samples like Tamai Javis had proposed long time ago on this very platform and we will have the leeway to tell Cameroonians that, look, this man is not ready to take Cameroon forward. These are his ideologies, and they do not look developmental to the country. This is somebody who can become a disaster if Cameroon is given to his hand. And at that time, it comes back to our role as civil society because we meet the people every day. We'll be telling them the raw facts will be there, presented to the people. This man is not fit for the top job because of this, that, that. This man is fit because of this, that, that. Now, we throw it to the Cameroonians, and we know that our influence counts. It will count. But going to impose on them that this is what we want you to do is what we have refused to do. Because we believe that we are in a flexible world. Ideas need to be given out, and ideas need to be taken in. It's only a fusion of two different ideas. People come to a compromise, and they see how to do with their ideologies. So that's actually the rule of what the civil society have been doing now. Sampling the before the the, the, the the 31st of this month, I think there are two of them who will be on standby waiting for us in Yaoundé. When we meet them, we'll be telling the result what we have been telling other people in the past years. What do you think you can do to Cameroon? Because we are like the voice of the people, the downtrodden. Those people who cannot come here and speak for themselves, we speak for them. And we carry back the messages to this politician. Those who will listen are those who are going to tell Cameroonians these are the kind of people, if we entrust Cameroon to their hands, we think we can have a new Cameroon. As simple as, uh, as okay, that. Okay, uh, you're going to land on that, uh, on this uh, topic, so that briefly we move to a second topic. Yeah, yeah um, <clears throat> when I hear uh, politicians like fighters that uh, 
Uh, he's the only one that understands the kangaroo system very well. I want to say that nobody actually understands Cameroon. Let's be clear. Because sometimes things happen the way all of us do. I understand very well that I'm the only one. Yeah, he said, I, I wrote it. Well. No, maybe you do not understand. Maybe you forgot what he said. I, I wrote it. I, I, I cannot say I, well, I'm after the, the program. No, after the program, you yeah, watch it. Right. After the program. So you said, and, and I'm saying that um, when we are looking at strategy, I think that we have gone beyond. When he said we are sentimental, when he said we are sentimental, I, I, I was waiting to hear their strategy, or I was waiting to hear the strategy that can be put in place for to win an election in Cameroon. Till we have had one hour plus, I've not heard that strategy. They keep saying that no, you know, it's difficult strategy. No, I'm talking yes, anglophone. Even on the strategy that you ought to tell us how anglophone can use, I've not heard it, Mr. Kum. Let us be clear here. There are some things that we say that have implications i will say this first let me start with civil society you asked uh mr tazi whom i respect so much about why the civil society cannot come into coalition look at what happened in kenya during the finance bill 40 civil society organizations wrote a joint memo condemning the finance bill and asking president william ruto to withdraw this finance bill come to our cameroon when the mobile money tax was about to be instituted how many civil society organizations came together wrote a memo questioning the bill when as election is coming how many civil society organizations have come together to educate the people political education on what their duties their their civil responsibility will be towards an election how many our civil society and organization is just that our political parties they are just working solo this one believe i have the solution this one believe i have the solution this one believe i have the solution that is a reality Look at Nigeria. How many civil society organizations came in Nigeria to petition and to ask for the elections to be investigated? There were many. There were more than 40. How many have we had in Cameroon? These civil society say, no, I'm afraid. Oh, me, I don't want to do it. Oh, me, I don't want to do it. They're afraid. I'm into an environment. I'm, yeah, I'm into this. Into I'm into this. And mm. you, you only see the activity when it comes to sharing of bags of rice and soap and Omo in the IDPs. That's where they're good at. But the thing is, like as Bishop Desmond Tutu said, we cannot delude ourselves by singing hallelujah when the masses are dying. We cannot delude ourselves by saying, oh, I'm into this, I'm into that, when the people don't have electricity, common language in all the ten regions. When the people don't have good roads, common language in all the ten regions. When the people take home package, cannot take the home, common language, all the ten regions. When the people cannot be both of 247 electricity, common language, or the 10 region. Water supply is a luxury. And education, complex. Look at the baccalaureate resort. Total disaster. Where you have the percentage of pass, you ask yourself, how did we get here? These are languages that unite all Cameroonians. And I hear people telling us that, uh, you know, Anglophones, it's difficult because strategy. What are the strategy? We're in a new era. As it was in the beginning, it is not now. <laughs> now has changed. And then now that I've changed, I've given roadmap, Mr. Fai. Whether you won't like it or not, the same way I gave the civil society. Whether you won't like it or not, no, the, the dynamics has changed. We are talking about social media. Yeah. I, when I go up, up the office up there, I interact with U.S. congressmen that are online on their different social media platforms. I, I, I write them, they reply. They, they say, we are, where are you right now from Cameroon? And they reply and they tell me that foreign policy towards Cameroon. How many of our politicians would be presidential candidates, including your own principal, are interact with youth on a regular basis on social media during this so period? How do you want them to be? I say, including. It means they cannot be. And say, at this moment. Yeah. No, which means that I'm. Yeah, no, no. I am doing a call, a reawakening call, to give them strategies. Yeah. The day that you shall have a joint conference. Online conference with Bala Agobala, engaging these people. Akare, engaging these people online. Engage them. That's first strategy. And the second now. now okay. The second strategy is not late. The second strategy, visiting of churches. Yep. Nobody stop your you from visiting this church. Today you visit uh, uh Kali Church Bonamusari. You discuss with them, they'll introduce you, hey, this person has come. You greet them, just greet him. As you leave there, you're going to a next Jange house. You leave this Yage house, you're going to, it means that just that day in Douala, you have visited more than 10 places. Do you need money? That is a strategy that the people were not using in the late 2000s. In 2018, they were not using that strategy. What are the strategies that our politicians have been using? Like 2018, Mr. Lord, 2018, did you hear about all the, after 2018, did you hear about the parties again? Did you even know their principles? After 2018 election, they went and sat in their houses. 
That's the strategy that they are expecting that Anglophones should use. That's why they are saying that Anglophones are not ready. That's not the strategy we are going to use. We are going to hijack you people and take you people by storm. And I tell you, I will leave that campaign. Starting from November, you people will see our strategy. Okay. okay. It's going to start by November. November, you can see our strategy. Okay, yes. okay, okay, we are taking a short break to <laughs> briefly discuss on our second topic for tonight. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, we are uh, on uh, My Media Prime TV, broadcasting live from Fengudron Bange Koto, out here in Douala, the nation's economic capital. But we have talked about Anglophones as if Anglophones no longer exist within the CPDM party. We could still have an Anglophone uh, winning elections from within uh, the CPDM uh, party. But um, nope, none of you raised it there. And uh, I don't know why you think. Yeah, yeah, the issue uh, don't is, you have Anglophones? No, the, the, the issue is why we didn't raise it was because we, 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 we know that they, they can have, be. They already have, have a natural have candidate. Natural natural candidate. But in natural event candidate. of that natural candidate, I'm sure that if that natural candidate is not going in, there will be an Anglophone. Okay. There's a possibility. Uh, to have that anglophone from within the ruling uh, CPDM uh, party, we are going to use this uh, 20 minutes. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be just one round eh, to discuss about a uh, growing disrespect for high instructions or instruction uh, coming in uh, from the president of the republic. We know what is happening at the National Hydrocarbons uh, Corporation (SNH). And uh, we have seen the fight between the Ministry of um, Sports and Physical Education and uh, the President of Fika Food, where the President of Fika Food actually puts high instructions uh, to doubt. We have seen the Minister of uh, Justice and Keeper of the Seals writing to his collaborators to be very careful when they receive what is called high instructions. And um, uh, Mr. Tazi, what is not working well? Is it that? people are beginning to doubt the these instructions that for some time or for a very long time has been considered sacred. Yeah, Mr. Kum, thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, yeah. I think it was very smart of you to coin out this topic because my observation is that uh, this issue of high instructions, the first issue of that, my observation is that high instructions have led to the disrespect of the Cameroon national law and international conventions that the Cameroon government have signed. And from that view, my observation is that nobody in Cameroon is, should be above the law. Maybe they are put you above the law, but nobody is supposed to be above the law. Above the law. The law of Cameroon is supposed to be supreme. And if you follow the maneuver of high instructions, when high instructions, that idea of high instruction often comes in when they want to abuse the law. We had a debate here, I will pick one of the examples you mentioned, with the, the, the squabble between FECA Food and the Ministry of Youth Transport. And my question was, what does the law say? Because we are guided, we are, we are supposed to be in a state of law. And when something comes up like that, the starting point should be, what does, even if I went to uh, suppress the law and give high instructions a leeway, we should first know what the law of the nation says. What does the law say concerning this issue? Okay, the law says this, but for now, because of some powers that are given some, to some authorities, we can play down on the law. And that will help you measure the, 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 how many degrees you are shifting away from the law. But if you just behave as if the law does not exist, then you can be, even you who is taking or executing the high instructions, you can seriously be fallible because you may execute it and abuse it that even the person of the high instructions will have to, we may have to persecute you for abusing the high instructions he gave you. So my observation of the high instructions, the first, it has, communists have used it to undermine the Cameroon law and it's very dangerous. Because it's time they say high instructions, we don't ask questions again. Okay. And we so, don't, we, we, okay. Yes, yeah, so I think, I think that's my take on that. That's true, that's your take. Yeah. Um, when we, we find repetitions, 
of persons doubting high instructions. Is it the fact that they are doubting high instructions from the president of the republic or high instructions from uh, the person who is using uh, the high instructions? Well, you know, in the kangaroo system, the things operate in a lackadaisical manner. First, they are confused themselves there. And that's how the confusion will confuse them to their kingdom come. Now, when they hear high instruction, the first indication you get is that the reason why they are hesitant, hesitant to respond to the high instruction is when they doubt the source of the high instruction. It's very clear. Because some of them have their private dealings with close associates to those who are, who are presumed to have issued the high instruction. Mm. So I see a hassle from the president. But I am very close to the cousin. When the high instruction comes, I ask the cousin, are you sure it is daddy who has really given the high instruction? Cousin tells me, just wait. After two, three days. No, I spoke with daddy. He, was, he started giving me the leeway to resist it to the kingdom come. So... That is how kangaroo systems operate, where the instructions come and it can be counteracted. And sometimes you realize that even with the high instruction, you could remember that at the level of the government, you could be at the high government sector like we have our prime minister, and there are issues below him that he cannot have a say in it. Look at the issue of SNH, for example. Are you telling me that the prime minister cannot get to that to put it to order? That it must be at the level of the presidency. In fact, those guys have they are in short. Yeah, they but, are, but the PC, the, the PC the there is the secretary general at the prime, at the at the, at the secretary general at the presidency. Is the PC? Yes, there, mm -hmm. it is true at the PC at that level. But we think that he himself is not actually the, the direct day-to-day -day manager of that <coughs> enterprise. That enterprise is under a two-days ministry. So if you have the PC as they have a particular function, which they function periodically when sessions are holding. Mm. Out of the sessions, the SNH is under a particular ministry, water and energy, I think so. Mm. And under water and energy, that particular ministry is under the tutelage of the prime minister and head of government. So I think that the respect of hierarchy is not even there. That's why I sometimes ask myself, if I were even the prime minister, I don't know if I would still be there. I would have even just got me and rest me because there are things that are very aching. I have to be honest with you. Because when you look at it, what comes at a board meeting that was supposed to hold place, SNH is transferred maybe to the presidency because a PCI is from the president? No. But we have hierarchies that they should have their respect because to be given. they could not hold at the... Yeah. the yes. Yes. So they could not hold. That's why yeah. I said that the prime minister of the head of government is supposed to adjudicate. So that things that get to the presidency should be when they are above the level of the prime minister. That is how management is supposed to be at the level of the state. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in public administration, things that get to the top administration should be when they have not been able to be solved at the other lower levels. Mm -hmm. But when you bypass the, uh, the, the, the levels that are supposed to be, and then you move straight to the top level all the time, it means that you undermine the jurisdiction and the existence of the powers you have given to your subordinate. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's why I said that I like the professor because sometimes he just stays him quiet. Which is true because sometimes you'll be getting yourself into scrabble in issues which are even not too necessary. If not, what is the role of the head of government? That's the question. And if you cannot give to, to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, it means that you yourself, you're undermining the, the role of Caesar. So at the end of it, the high instruction have been an indication that the system has expired. That is why the system will go on leave whether they like it or not. You're only here. You have expired and you will go. You are simply marking time. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, in the room. Now, are we, when you look at Minister of Justice questioning the, uh, the, the genuineness of some of the high instructions that are, are given down, we saw Fika Food and now we have uh, the, the boss of SNH that is also uh, mm -hmm. doubting. Do we see a play out of camps? That is, um, there are camps that are using. Uh, high instructions to fight one another. No, you are you are asking an answer. Okay. Uh, uh, it is very sad, term, Mr. Leo. It's very sad. The the fighting of the camps is very clear. Even a blind citizen in Cameroon will be aware of that. To answer your question, I want to believe that the words of the president of the republic are known are no longer sacred. As the first institution of the land. His word was supposed to be sacred. And if you ask me whether people are doubting the genuineness <laughs> of the high instructions of the head of state, I will say this has been born out of administrative bureaucracy. Administrative bureaucracy, a system of administration where 
you choose to remain in your office thinking that you would rule by command, you telecommand. Uh, people have every right, 100%, to doubt the genuineness of the, hit, uh, the, the, the high instructions. When they can't get came, the head of state spoke. Nobody has been to Konengi because of that. We saw how part of the stadium collapsed on the people, which was enough for the instructions of the head of state to be taken to the letter. We saw COVID gate and the ramifications. The head of state. Eh? They stamp it. They stamp it. It could be managed. It could be managed. It's, it's out of human uh, uh, failure. We saw the COVID gate. And today, you see how videos are circulating. We cannot confirm that, but we see how money is money is attributed to various ministers and how they embezzled. The head of state came out. I made it clear. Anybody who touched on a franc of the COVID gate shall be called to book. Those were high instructions. Till date, nobody has been called or sent to Konengi because of that. When the affair of the Africa food and the sport boss came out, that is what actually opened the eyes of Cameroonians to know that some of these instructions are fake, that they are not from the head of state. A CBM panelist said it in the sister's uh, TV, and it can be verified at any time. They are playing it every day. Il y a les vraies instructions du chef de l'État. Il y a les faux instructions du chef de l'État. Fabriqué. And he went further to buttress his point that all of this is because the state of state speeches are being written and things are put inside that he himself is not aware. These things I'm saying here, it is viral. And even in their ranks, there are questions going on. All of this put together tells you that Cameroonians with the recent affair of Samuel Eto and the Minister of Sports, if they used to doubt that the high instructions were not coming directly from the head of state, but from people who are using Maybe his age and the fact that he has not been very present on the field like other presidents to pass information to favor certain camps against other camps. This particular affair, I and you, <coughs> had an eye opening that it is not everything that they say high instruction in this country. That's really high instruction. And I want to end by saying this. Leaders who go down to the annals of their history are leaders who must have probably prepared and groomed those to take over them. I am afraid if you are a leader and you can lead for 42 years and instructions are still given and people are not taken, it means that they have minimized the first institution of the country which is the head of state. If the head of state needs to leave the unity palace through a big door Something needs to be done very urgently. Otherwise, I am afraid he will leave and his name will not have been stenciled in the history of Cameroon books. Okay, um, he's left his uh, mark already. The fact that he's president for 42 years uh, <laughs> <laughs> cannot be, yeah, you cannot remove uh, that. Yeah, but um, I'm talking about uh, um, this issue of. <laughs> of um, that's what we are talking about now. High instructions from the President of the Republic. There are some that are described as um, high instructions from the President of the Republic, His Excellency President Paul Bia. What else we say? High instructions from the Presidency. I don't know whether there is a nuance uh, somewhere, but each person is claiming to be Lord when you look at the resistance that we face. I don't know whether you closely follow what is happening at SNH today, where you see the boss of SNH thinks that he wants greater confirmation that instructions actually came from the President of the Republic. If not, I don't know what will explain what is happening at that level. But when you, see, when you also analyze what went through with the Fika Food saga, um, it tells that something is not right uh, somewhere. Looks like 
so many kingdoms <laughs> have been created where people are lording all, 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 all yes i will start by uh, zooming in on the what happened uh today if you look at the reality mm -hmm. the petroleum sector in cameroon is something that is treated sacredly that mm -hmm. nobody knows which there was a minister at one point in time said the mathematics between the import and the exportation or the production of petroleum in this country is so complex that only him and the head of state can understand. It was a sonara boss. Yeah, a sonara boss. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the reality today, if you ask, where is the statistics of the barrel of oil being produced in Sonara? How many is being sold? You may never find it there. Now, to answer, to go back to your question, I think Petit Bay sang it like abuse the confiance. If you look at Cameroon's constitution, it gives room for high instruction. And I will say why the Constitution gives you right instruction. The Constitution in itself is not complete. For example, let's look at the, uh, Article 66 of the Constitution. It talks about declaration of asset, but it did not give text of application. Now, in 2006, that was the 1996 Constitution, in 2006 there was not a law of declaration of asset, but it still had not also given the text of application on how that would be done. Now, it went further in saying that the head of state will not give the text of application. Now, there are some provisions within the Constitution that don't have text of application. Now, which gives powers now to the head of state to now mandate people at a certain point to handle these issues. That was how high instructions came to exist, into being. And now, when you look at this high instruction issue, it can't, if our Constitution can now be fully funded in terms of removing the issue of text of application, if you look at the SNH, let us look into detail what is it? How is that scripted in the Constitution? Who has the power to mandate that body within the Constitution? Is there a text of application? How that body functions effectively? You would come back to see that the issue will still revolve on text of application. The issue about her instruction was further exposed by Samuel Tofis. And we said that the brohaha between the Ministry of Sport and that of the President of Africa Food is a litmus test we produce two hypotheses for researchers. One, are all high instructions from the head of state? If yes, why is it that Samuel Etofis has not been reprimanded by the ministry's concern or by the government? Now, we waited until we said, let's give it, let's give room for three weeks or two weeks. The first match they'll play. Let's see how this would be done. Some people even told us that after the last match they went and played in Angola, the, 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 the state assume its responsibility, which means we know what that means. But the state till now has not assumed that responsibility, which has not made us to confirm the hypothesis that not all high instructions are actually high instruction because it takes God to challenge the head of state instruction, which is means I are challenging the institution of the president. We who elected the president are challenging us. But if that has not been done, it means there is a questionable mark on high instruction. Now, to solve this issue of high instruction, I will say that it is bad normal for us to look at, revisit our constitution. Because there are a lot of errors where you go to the constitution, they will tell you, now, no, there's no text of application. Yes, the constitution states this. Now, since there's no text of application, it, it, it states that if you go to that, especially Article 66, it goes by and says the head of state has determined how the other structure shall be. Now, if he shall determine how should we rule, is it not high instructions? He has given high instructions. So to me, on that note, to answer your question, I will simply say that what happens today is reminding us about us to revisit our constitution, to see have whether... You, have you asked your own question, I've answered, or you've answered my question? No. I'm talking about the fact that from every indication, it looks like many kingdoms are, are, have been created within a kingdom where at the level of SNH, Adolf Muriki, who is the boss there, thinks that he is the Lord. Africa food, somebody two things that he is the Lord. At this level, um, everybody. That's yeah, because I'm asking, that's what I'm asking, that's what I'm asking your question, Mr. Liu. Yes, that's what I'm asking your question. Everybody is, is a king. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm asking your question that mm. they are acting like that because if you look at the void created within the, the constitution, mm. it gives the yes, possibility exactly. of the head of senate to determine do this, do this. Now, because people have seen that, that is what the vacuum and they are in the position of power, they are using that to create their kingdom. 
And I've quoted the example of the fact that we don't have text of application for most of some of the things that are supposed to be done. That's why these mini kingdoms are coming up. To solve that problem, we have to revisit back the constitution and make sure that the constitution should not be regulated by a presidential decree. Most, if you look at very every day or some often time you see presidential decree are come out regulating part of the constitution. But that's not how it's supposed to be. Like example, the 2006 law. That state the declaration of asset. Now it's regulating the nineteen the nineteen ninety article sixty six and further and further and further. That's why there's a mini kingdom. To solve this mini kingdom, therefore, we must now start it, it takes us back to this presidential election. Let us revisit and vote people in power and relook really our constitution. One minute. Uh -huh. uh, it what makes it even the most sad is the fact that like you asked a very good question about kingdoms within kingdoms. That is exactly what is happening in Cameroon as of now. I don't know the 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 boss of the says night has been in this office since 1993 till date. One man. I am telling you, 1993. Still, as if, and they say your time to go has come. You are sitting tight. Who told you that it was your father's ancestors told that you were to sit there until you die? This one comes back to another thing. Age of active service in Cameroon, especially for those. Look, if something is not done, like I said, to know that this is when somebody is supposed to work and go on retirement permanently, not that you go to pick you back. Now, 1993 to 2024, one person is there, and time counts like this. He's above the words of the president. It means that. Somehow, his kingdom, where he's sitting, is certainly bigger than the kingdom. Has had independence. Yes, he has had independence within an independent state, and his kingdom is bigger than that of the head of state, because the head of state will not give a word. And you insist until the same presidency goes down to the level of respecting him, because to me, taking that, uh, that, that meeting to the presidency is a sign of respecting him because they want him to see reasons with them why they were telling him that his time is off. I think we cannot continue to live like this. <laughs> okay. Sorry, we cannot. Um, how do we make sure that we respect the instructions are given to by the president of the republic? Because even if uh, Professor Maurice Camto were to become president of the republic, I'm not sure he's going to do everything. There are some parts that he's going to delegate to his collaborators. But how do we make those instructions uh, to? actually be sacred so that we don't doubt and make sure that they are respected because whether we like it or not the president of the republic is an institution mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the only simple way to get that across is that one you who occupies those positions you have in mind that it's not your father's job i know that in as much as you come in there's a day you will go out just like when professor morris camter was there as secretary of state he got tired of the system and backed out simple because it was not moving in line with what he wanted which means your personal ego that's your personal portfolio counts a lot and so if you are somewhere even by error the instruction comes from elsewhere which normally should be written whether it was from the one faction in president or not it's better you leave and then let the, let the president who is the one who was supposed to send it call him back and no sorry it did not come from me come back you will have a lot of that is you have a lot of respect than to cling on to it for how many years God for God's sake. And again, the fact that this kind of SNH, SNH is under mind and energy. And at the same time, is dealing directly with the presidency because of a board. It means there's something they are hiding. The petrol, in fact, I will see by Star Kerebuna, the Glen Costa we are talking. You people will pay all the franc of not accounting for the oil in this country. All of you will pay for because this is an indication that. If one man could be there for over 30 years okay. and the issue is being solved by the presidency and not under the tutelage ministry in which that particular structure is supposed to report to, it means that there's something. Uh, just like we have some time, we, 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 we got that um, during the days of Bernard Edding. Uh, Bernard Edding was the all powerful that even the Minister of Mines and Water could not, uh, Edding could not control him. Mm -hmm. Flight is from is, is directly from Edea, from his hometown straight to Sonara and every day back, helicopter. And the liquor leave from there directly to the presidency and will not come back. Some structures that see the president of the republic almost on daily basis, and some other higher structures cannot see the president means there is something wrong. Anyway, the kangaroo is kangaroo. So let me not even be blamed because it has expired already. But 
as I said, a dime will come. You will not escape a dime. Each and every one of you will account for any one oil drop that you side phone in one way or the other in putting in place a kangaroo system of high instruction from different, different angles that we don't even know where it's coming from. You have expired. All of you go and leave. Thank you. Okay. Um, but people should go and leave through elections. Eh? Hope your party is working so hard <laughs> to send them on leave. We are already one for future. <laughs> Thank you. That you for already one, one for future. One by for future. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, how do we how do we make uh, the word of the president of the republic to really uh, to remain secret? Mr. Akum, right now it's Do we start by discipline ourselves? Right now, mm -hmm. right now it's difficult eh, because Kamunians have lost faith. And you know, when you lost confidence in something, it's very, very difficult to reinstate it. Some Kamunians. Some Kamunians. Some Kamunians. So mm -hmm. now that some Kamunians have lost, and not only some Kamunians, but some very conspicuous figures, like you've mentioned there, Ministry of Justice, the, the Feka Food, uh, or, or the examples you've mentioned, it means that it's not only among common Kamunia, it has gone up to some very people in very powerful positions in governments. And so for you to correct that, it's pretty difficult. First, we know that, uh, we all know that the president has delegated some powers, like his signature to, to certain quarters in the administration. So if such, if such people who are holding the signature of president gives instructions that are from the president, is it accepted that like being from the president or not? So we have to draw these fine lines before we're able to know what, when to respect what. Because even those who want to investigate into whether the instructions are from the president or not, it is very difficult. It could still be that they are not from the president and the people, other people say that, even though he didn't say it, but he gave me the authority to say it. And so for us, in my opinion, for us to get that confidence back, it would take it would take a, a, I don't know the type of strategy it can take because to convince somebody that today, what today he thought that was not from the president is to the model from the president, you need to have proven that he was wrong yesterday to everything that was not from the president. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a very complex issue to regain the confidence, very, very to regain the confidence of people. And I think that uh, to gain that confidence, my suggestion would be that the next president, and maybe the next president will instead after the presidential election of 2025, the next person may be able to reinstate that confidence. That will no, be we'll sure be that... Able, not that maybe. The new president will be, not that maybe. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be able to reinstate yeah, that you confidence. You are talking about the new president. There's no, there's, there's no guarantee that there's going to be but the new president because we are, we are in a democracy. Nothing... nothing no, when I say new president, okay. I'm well, not saying that we'll be president Bob, yeah? It may be an old new president. But no, <laughs> not for me. It's a new president that no, will come no, in. No, the person who was elected in 2015 is a new president to come yeah. Even if it is president Bob, he was elected. If it is president Bob, you will you even get things worse. If it's a new president, a new no, negative... No, that's not what I meant by new president. That's what new... Yeah, you're interpreting... That's my interpretation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What I refer to as new president, yeah. whoever yeah. is elected in 2025... We, we are out of time. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I am thinking that... No, 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 no. <laughs> I am saying that all of these things happening in our country is because everybody is having skeletons in his cupboard. That is why the slave hammer cannot fall where it is supposed to fall. Because, you know, when a group of friends have been doing certain things so they, together, there is a time that even in the worst of moments, you cannot betray each other because you know that you are an accomplice directly or indirectly. The house needs to be cleaned and cleaned thoroughly, right from it to the uh, yeah. I think that uh, to solve this, like I'll go back, the constitution needs to be revisited. Because if you look at there are a lot of bodies that have not been given full powers. Everything are sent to the presidency. For example, Kona. look like Kona is not the full power, it does not have that full powers. It does it does the report, it's sent to the president. Now high instruction will not come whether to prosecute or not. But if Kona has the power, look at the bunch of documents Kona produces on the regular. Go to other bodies, other some of look at national uh, human rights, national human rights commission. All these bodies are produced, produced, produced. So when it comes back now, the head of have to go to go to go to it takes time. So to solve this issue, powers need to be dedicated. Like one of them is National Communication Council. It's now has the power. 
and he's moved from a, a regular and a vice senator to a regulatory body. So the head of state is free. The head of state is a human being. It's not a supernatural being that all materials is up on the table. So if this high, to solve this high instruction thing, we have to go back to the constitution and give people powers. Look in Cameroon, it's only in Cameroon that we have high instruction, high instruction, high instruction. Kenya, do they rule by high instruction? Nigeria, do they rule by high instruction? Frequently, we have high instruction, high instruction, high instruction. Because we don't have much of the text of application are not stated within our constitution. To me, that's how we can solve it all. Okay, that's how we can uh, solve it. Uh, thank you for coming. For Evis Tayong. Thanks very much. It's my pleasure being present here today. And a special uh, greetings uh, to J Kennedy and to all the CMF members of uh, PC Achualam out there in Bamenda who are watching us five on five, including those from Gunoko Village. Thank you. Mr. Tazi, thank you for coming. Thank you, Mr. Kum, for inviting me. And uh, it is a pleasure to be here. And we hope that uh, we've made our only two contribution to the, the ideas, the political landscape. And we hope that uh, the political leaders in Cameroon will learn to listen to advice mm. from civil society and from other quarters and that the politicians in Cameroon will learn to take a proper assessment of their potentials and go into coalitions, especially the opposition leader, if they really want to see a church. Okay. Thank you for coming, Zio. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. It was, it was a pleasure to be here. We only think that uh, those who are still at the helm of Cameroon should know this today, tomorrow, until they leave. All of us shall pass. Cameroon shall remain. The legacy we leave, we leave behind will be what we did yesterday for a, we did yesterday for a better Cameroon of today and tomorrow. Thank you for having me. Javis, thank you for coming. Thank you, uh, dear Barista Gobala, Christopher <laughs> Fominye, Fominyong, dear Akeremuna, dear uh, Rebecca Enoncho. The list is long. Please, it's long overdue. Please. Civil society too, please, long overdue. Come together. Let us see. And we will support you. I will go down to the field. Irrespective of who, I will go down. That might be a journalist. Yeah? We want to thank... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank the production team, um, Desmond and Eli, for production. We want to thank you too, Tabi Tabi Brian, for supervision. And for all of you for watching, stay blessed. Bye-bye. <laughs>